Hi, welcome to another video. So, Mini Max has launched a new model, and I thought to talk about this because I was getting a lot of comments asking me to test it. So, that's why I thought to talk about it as well. This is their new model called Minimax M2, which is an upgrade from the last version called Minimax M1. The weights are available on Hugging Face as well. I believe it might be open sourced because the last model was also open sourced. So, that would be great. Anyway, currently, it has been benchmarked by artificial analysis, and it is now available for free on OpenRouter and their API platform. So, you can use it with things like Kilo, Claude Code, and stuff for free. Their own API might have better rate limits than the open router one. I haven't tried that, but you can check it out. It allows you to use it as much as you want in almost all kinds of coders and stuff like that. They say that Minimax M2 is a compact, high-efficiency, large language model optimized for end-to-end -end coding and agentic workflows. With 10 billion activated parameters, 230 billion total, it delivers near-frontier intelligence across general reasoning, tool use, and multi-step task execution while maintaining low latency and deployment efficiency. So, this is a pretty small model. It's only 230 billion parameters, with about 10 billion activated parameters. So, this is a smaller model than GLM, Kimi, and others, while being only about 110 billion parameters, smaller than GLM 4.5 Air. So, this is quite a good size, and can be deployed on local clusters if you're an AI fanatic. If we look at the artificial analysis benchmarks, by the way, I don't really find these benchmarks useful at all, apart from the speed or provider variance benchmarks, because they mainly use open benchmarks that are very saturated at this point, and many models just straight up train on them. But if we look at it, then Minimax M2 scores just below Claude 4.5 Sonnet. The speed is pretty fine as well, and the price is only $0.5 and $2.2 per million tokens which is not bad at all. The context window sits at about 205,000 tokens. The previous model had about 1 million tokens, but this one doesn't, which is an interesting choice, and makes me wonder why they backtracked from it. In the coding index, it comes two points below Sonnet. I mean, I don't know how these benchmarks work, because Grok 4 Fast is not a good coding model. I can tell you that much and yet it scores above. So, yeah. Also, this is a reasoning model, and it always does reasoning. So, yeah, there's that. It's pretty great at tool calling as well. Anyway, that's about it in the pure old benchmarks. Now, I have obviously tested it on my own benchmarks, and in the floor plan question, it makes a floor plan, but it doesn't make sense at all. It's not good, but it does work, so I scored it accordingly. Then, the panda holding a burger is pretty good. I mean, it's not the best, like Gemini 3's checkpoints, but it's probably one of the best among open models. So, this is quite awesome. Then, we have the Pokeball in 3JS, and well, it's not great. It looks more like a Premier Ball rather than a Pokeball. So, this is not great. The chessboard is also laid out correctly, but it doesn't work. I think this model is heavily trained on GPT-5 outputs, because this kind of UI is generally very GPT-5-like. So, yeah, it's surely trained from that. The Minecraft game also doesn't work. The butterfly flying in the garden is kind of fine. It looks more like a bug to me, but it still works. So, this is also fine. The CLI tool in Rust and the Blender script are also fine, but not great. In the mathematics question, it passes one of them, and it also passes the riddle question. This puts it in the 12th position on my leaderboard, which is below Claude 4 Sonnet, 
GLM, and Deep Seek Terminus, which is not bad. This, along with GLM and Longcat, are the only models in the top 15 that perform this well. You also have to consider that this is an insanely small model when compared to GLM or DeepSeek. So, this is an awesome win for them. Now, it becomes even more awesome when you see the agentic tests. I mean, this is a true agentic model. So, I did all my agentic tests with Kilo. You can also configure it quite easily there with the Minimax M2 API or via Open Router. I'm using the Open Router API. So, yeah, it works extremely well with it. This is the first open model I've seen that doesn't give me any edit failures. It's just really good at agentic tasks. The first task was the Movie Tracker app, and well, it's really good. You get the sliding panels, and you can open up the inner pages. The title bar is not removed here, which is a bit of a minus, but it's still really great. Another thing is that the code quality of this model is insane. It doesn't do any sonnet-like things, such as hard-coding API keys into the code, and it writes very good code. It even bifurcates the code into different files for better management. It's really good. Similarly, the GOTUI calculator app is also pretty great. You can see that this works really well. Also, it again used every tool in Kilo code really well. It does search and replace, runs terminal commands. It's just amazing. Then, we go to the Godo game, and well, in Godo, it's just not good. It doesn't know the language and just can't work. So, I won't complain, considering how small and cheap this model is comparatively. So, not bad. It is still pretty good. The open code repo question is still unsolved because it's in Go. It was able to navigate the files correctly, which by itself is a challenge. But it's still not great. And for that matter, even Sonnet can't do this. Then there's the Svelte question, and it's kind of fine in this. It does get to a point where it's somewhat usable. These questions are for long-running tasks, and it's quite good at those as well. So, that's not a problem. It's still better than GLM 4.6 in these cases. As GLM starts to fall apart in some long-running tasks, but this doesn't. So, this is quite great. It can't really do Nuxt coding, so it's not great at that question. And Rust is also not a strong spot for it. This makes it score the fifth position on the leaderboard. And this is an insanely good model for agentic tasks. It still comes a bit below GLM 4.6, but in general use cases, I'll keep it above GLM because of how good this model is at long-running tasks. It can keep going for hours, similar to GPT-5, and that is an awesome thing. I think this might be something I'll switch to and leave GLM, but GLM still has their coding plan, which is a great deal. However, considering the super low-cost API and the efficiency of this model, it looks like an awesome deal. This is a great model. I'll check it out more and probably do another video about this model in a day or two and talk about the nuances I find with it. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.